Hey, Synchronauts. I just wanted to uh, give you a little demonstration of um, recent uh, enhancements in Synchronet as well as a preview into what's uh, on the horizon. Um, I'm going to be using SyncTerm, a recent build here for Windows. Uh, this is the 1.1 beta, so that's a moving target. Um, but you can always get the latest from SyncTerm.net. I hope to be doing more of these videos on uh, a regular basis, demonstrating things. Hopefully sysops and users will learn stuff. Um, but also you'll get some insight into just kind of the direction and uh, my, my thinking. Um, so uh, one thing I'll, I'll show here. So this is my login screen for my BBS, Vertrauen. And you can see here I've got a mixture of fonts. Um, that's up here. This Vertrauen up here is a different font than the rest of the font on the screen. And uh, that's one of the newer features is mixed fonts uh, use, using actually a feature of SyncTerm that's had quite a while. Now part of the login process on my BBS, it uh, shows you a current list of inner BBS active users. So these are uh, users on BBSs that are part of the inner BBS uh, instant messaging feature of Synchronet. Uh, you probably don't have this on your system, but if you have that module installed, you can easily make this an event. Uh, that runs during inst uh, during login, and at any time, if you wanted to message one of these people, you can control P, enter BBS, gives you the list again, uh, message, and then go through and pick the guy you want to message, and then say something like, uh, you know, there. Anyway. So that's the explanation of that. Now, uh, another thing I want to kind of point out here, uh, I've been playing around with the auto message here. You can see now that it's, this is a wider than your typical auto message and it uses this quote syntax where you have the, uh, the quote prefix with the, the greater than symbol. Um, the reason for that is that we do have some nice word wrap logic in Synchronet that supports this quote prefixing and, and rewrapping. Whereas if it was indented with white space, it wouldn't. Uh, so that was kind of a hack, um, but uh, well, I can demonstrate what, what that'll do. So you logged in with it with a, a much wider terminal. So, so you see now that the auto message is wrapped differently. You've got you've, it's filling the uh, the width of the terminal uh, and not repeating the quote prefix nicely. So um, anyhow, it's kind of an experiment, something I just did recently, just so that uh, when you logged in with uh, different width terminals, um, particularly narrower terminals, like 40 column, uh, then the auto message would uh, b display very, very oddly. So that's something else. Um, and I might as well go ahead and show you uh, what 40 column would look like. Uh, so Commodore 64 would use 40 columns uh, output, and you can see here now it's, it's truncating the last on list uh, here on purpose, uh, but the auto message is wrapped pretty nicely. You get all the all the text and uh, the quote. Uh, the quotes are, are repeated there nicely. So, uh, if you haven't seen uh, Synchronet with Petsky, um, it's it's a newer feature in uh, version 317b, and uh, like you can have different menus. So so like that's my 40 column menu for example, uh, and if I was in 80 column mode, then you get an 80 column menu. So you can do that with any menu. You can have a, uh, a menu file that's particular to a certain terminal column width. Uh, that's a newer feature. And then um, if you're wider, I still display the old the old menus. Oh, I got a message from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, e chicken responded to my message. What I wanted to talk about, the particular subject for this video, is message listing and reading. So historically, uh, Synchronet has used a very scrolly interface. So if you're like new scanning messages and everything kind of scrolls from the bottom up, uh, and if you wanted to say, you know, reread a part of a message, you have to reread it. You know, like here's the R key. You can go down a line at a time or use an arrow key down to do stuff like that. Uh, but you know, you don't really get this like full screen interface. And if you want to list messages, then it's also kind of this tedious process of listing and you can't, there's no way to scroll backwards. So I'm hitting up arrow, it won't go backwards. I can't page up or, uh, you know, go home or end or anything like that. 
So, uh, I can disable the pause there, control O, if you don't know that trick, but, uh, you know, just a little tip, control um, K will show you control key hotkeys from anywhere, so those are the current hotkeys available, and uh, control O there turns off the, the, the pause, so if I want it back on, but say it's off, now it's on, so I get my auto pause. Uh, but these are all kind of hacks because you can't really easily scroll back. Now, granted, your terminal likely supports scroll back. Sync term supports scroll back with Alt B, and at least in Windows, that's the command key. So I can always use that to scroll back. And that's typically what I would do if I wanted to scroll back through messages or a particular message. Uh, but still, kind of tedious if you wanted to list a lot of messages and find something, sort things. Sorting is really not supported. Uh, and uh, something. You know, well, so I, I'm I'm showing a scrolly interface, but you can toggle on clearing uh, between message headers, so you you can have this behavior where it does clear the uh, the screen, so you get a little bit more of that full screen look. But it's completely clearing the screen, redisplaying the message. If the message is longer, then obviously you get this pause thing. The the message header goes away, so I don't I no longer know what message I'm looking at. These are all things that kind of irritated me, and uh, something that um, I found uh, with like Mystic in particular had a very good full screen experience uh, for ANSI users, and uh, you didn't have as much of this thing scrolling off the top of the screen. Uh, you get this more full screen interface. So I, I kind of want the best of both worlds. I want both of those things to be supported. So I certainly would never get rid of this style of like message scanning because um, people are used to it. You know, a lot of people, you know, don't want change or maybe they just like the way it is. Uh, other people certainly have asked for, you know, more, um, I don't know, interactive way to list messages. I mean, I have things like, you know, the threading, you know, this kind of is kind of full screen-ish. <laughs> One of those features that, you know, kind of works, but not great. Um, so you can select a message here. I hit star. This, so this is all built into the code. There's no, it's not script or anything. It's not a, a mod. It's just, it's just there. And it's the, uh, the star key, the toggle thread view. Uh, but things like that were kind of tedious. Um, don't work that great if like the thread is super long, for example. Uh, and like I said, no sorting, that kind of thing. And email in particular has been a problem. When, when you use your mailbox for all your email, like I do, uh, then you end up with this long list of email. Uh, and if you'll notice, a lot of these message subjects have all what appears to be garbage. It's actually MIME encoding. Uh, these are MIME encoded headers. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it's completely unreadable. Looks like this is actually base 64 encoded. And then other times it's quoted printable. So you do have mostly ASCII text, but you have uh, some other symbols in there potentially. Uh, so, you know, that's, even the from here, you see here, this is a, a UTF-8 uh, base64 encoded string, so it's represented this way. Not readable really at all. If you want to pick your message, well, it's scrolled off the screen, so I'd have to start at one. And I can do things like, you know, 10 in the, you know, 10 next 10 messages. I can list messages, but I can't scroll backwards. It's kind of, you know, eh. And then it does some MIME decoding, like the, the Synchronet Mail server, the SMTP server, uh, does MIME decoding for content transfer encoding. Uh, so uh, that's kind of the overall envelope for the entire message. If it's base64 quoted printable encoded, uh, it'll do that decoding. Uh, and then everything else is uh, retained as is. So you see this where it says MIME decoded uh, UTF plain text. Actually, the fact that it says UTF is UTF-8 is a very new feature that actually tells you what uh, the character set was. Um, but this is telling you that it actually did do, do some MIME decoding. If you turn off, if you turn on raw I/O mode, uh, and then you reread that message, um, you'll see that it's actually got some MIME parts in the message text. And uh, so Synchronet can decode that for you. That's all built in. Again, no script, no special scripting or anything. But it's kind of limited. Like it doesn't do HTML decoding. Um, it doesn't do any UTF-8 to uh, say code page, code page 437 or Petsky or just straight ASCII. It doesn't do any kind of character set translation. So you do end up with garbage sometimes like this. And, uh, and it doesn't do this these header field translations. Um, so these are all kind of the, the issues that, that I wanted to address with a new message listing and reading uh, interface. So let me get to a demonstration of that.
it's a JavaScript module, and I'm using L uh, from the main menu to list messages. So you get this full screen, uh, you know, interactive. I'm using arrow keys to go up and down. I can hit home to go to the top uh, and to go to the bottom. I can, um, so I'll, I'll explain. So the, this is very similar if, you, if you've used the new Synchronet BBS list module. I say new, it's probably three or four years now. Time flies. It, it's very similar. Um, <laughs> digital ma'am. Uh, Deuce, you're so funny. Anyway, uh, it supports this like multi-column. So these are actually columns up here from subject, the number. Uh, and you can, tog you can toggle columns by using the number keys. Well, you don't really toggle, you switch to a different format. So you see down here it says format zero through six. So the default is this format zero. One will take you to another column format. So now you have network address, date, time. This is not a good subboard to use as an example. Maybe this one's be better. Yeah, it's got more, more variability. Okay, so uh, again, if I uh, hit a number, I can go straight to a column format or I can use left and right arrows to go th cycle through them. So you see our network address and uh, date and time of the message was written, some attributes, a score, the subject of the message, message IDs, program IDs, you know, all this. And that's all very configurable and flexible. Uh, I'll be making that, it actually it already is part of the mod ops I, I and I for this module. Uh, you can you can add and remove and reorder all the columns that you like. So um, whatever's supported in the Synchronet uh, JavaScript object model for messages, you can be able to display here or, or hide if you like. Now sorting, that's kind of an important feature here. So if you hit, this is just like, again, very much like the Synchronet BBS list. You hit S and it's going to sort by the first column. You hit S again, it moves to the next column, resorts. Uh, you can hit uh, exclamation mark to reverse the order of the list. So now, you know, the highest uh, ASCII sort value is at the top. And uh, again, so S. Now, capital S, this is actually kind of a newer feature, moves backwards through the sort order. So now I'm moving backwards. And then if I go to the end, then it's no longer sorted. It goes back to the natural ordering of the messages. Uh, so th that's an important feature. Another one is preview I have here. So I'm using P, toggle preview. And that gives you, you know, half the window here is, is showing you the, the content of the message text. And, you know, it just kind of shows you uh, I, I, the first part of the message. Now, I do have this feature right now anyway where you can actually go into that preview and scroll it. So it's possible to completely read the message in the preview mode if you like. Um, Anyhow, uh, but uh, you know, page up and down work. You can always turn the preview off if you don't like it. And um, I think for like email, that preview will default to on. It'll it'll be all configurable, and and you know, you'll be able to control that via command line options or module options. But uh, it makes sense when you're reading email that you'd want the the preview to maybe be there by default. But maybe when you're listing a subboard, uh, you wouldn't want it on there by default. Uh, and uh, you know, this is. It's loading all the messages headers into memory. It has to do that to do the, the sorting. Um, so it does, it's a little bit slower than say, you know, the normal scan of a message base. I don't think I'll probably be using this for new scans. Although I think I'll make it available from the new scan uh, prompt. So like while you're reading messages, you could hit L and then this is the interface you'd get uh, for reading messages. Now, when you um, actually hit select a message and hit enter, it looks very similar. Uh, it should look almost identical. Um, little, little bit of differences, you know, the, uh, the avatar here actually goes to the top of the screen always. And um, you see things like down here, it says wrapped lines uh, and gives you the number of lines. And then the prompt is always at the bottom, regardless of the length of the message. So this message is more than the screen full. So I've got an indicator here saying there's more and now you can scroll and then you see that uh, you know, the header stays, in, the header stays in place, you know, I go to like maybe a longer message here and I can use up and uh, page up and down, um, home and end to go to the top and bottom of the message. Uh, so while it looks very familiar at glance, it's actually much more capable. Now, uh, one thing is, uh, Synchronet has, like I said, the built-in word wrapping logic and it's, it's pretty good. Thank you, Deuce. And, uh, However, sometimes you maybe want to see a message not wrapped with that logic. So you can hit W to turn off the word wrapping. And now you're going to look at what's sort of the native wrapping of the message. 
Uh, it will split long lines, but it's not going to do it on a word boundary. So it might look a little differently, but that is helpful when you're maybe debugging issues. And then there's, uh, at least now anyway, there's some uh, debug modes like hexadecimal dump. So I can actually look at the raw uh, hexadecimal values and figure out, oh, you know, there's uh, you know, a carriage turn without a line feed there or whatever. Um, anyhow, so there's some, there's some other modes I'll, I'll get into when I show email. It's more interesting, uh, like the source mode. Uh, kind of shows you the RFC 822 uh, representation of the message. So you can see all your FidoNet headers here. And um, what would be represented had this message, if this message were to be transported over, uh, say, NNTP or, or SMTP or IMAP, uh, one of the internet standards, then this is what your message header would look like. And then the content of the message, um, in this case, it's going to look pretty much the same, but in email, uh, we'll get into that, you know, the, it can look quite different. Anyhow, um, as far as capabilities right here in the reading interface, you, you know, I have like replying to messages and stuff. That's, you know, about it. I don't have like, you know, find and, and uh, other options, but, you know, quitting out takes you back to the listing. And uh, I do have like a, you know, a go-to option here. You can go to, you know, a certain message. This is interesting for subboards, but I think it's most interesting for email. And that's what I wanted to show next. So if I go into, I have a test here. So this is my mailbox for today anyway. Uh, and you can see now, actually it'd be good to show this like side or, or go back and forth. There's one. Okay, so this is HTML encoded. So another advantage of using a JavaScript modules, I can you know, use the, the the HTML stuff we have in JavaScript for uh, converting to uh, something that's compatible with a BBS client. Uh, so that's that Angels post game alert. So you know, much more readable. If I look at the source of this message, you know, it's pretty unreadable in a typical. Uh, by a typical terminal user, um, but you know, I want to make I want to make as many of these messages completely usable and readable. Of course, t attachments are also supported. It'll it'll decode MIME attachments as well. And looking at this, you'd think, oh, this is great, but you know, it's it's only going to work for ANSI users, and I definitely do not want that to be the case. I want to sh show you what it it'll look like without ANSI. So I'm going to turn off ANSI support. And there is an issue, I think, with previews here. Yeah, previews don't quite work right. Um, but everything else should work fine. So I can go through the messages, looking for a long message. That was kind of a long one there. So I can scroll up and down. And this is, there's no ANSI. Now, granted, granted, it's not going to be as fast, and there's a lot of screen redraws and stuff. But it's completely usable, completely readable, uh, and I'm not using ANSI at all. The idea is that this will work with any terminal. Let me see. Let me give it an example of Petski. So this is Vertrauen in 80 column Petski mode. That's why it's going to look quite different. No ANSI. Uh, all the characters, colors, and cursor animation are using the Commodore Petski character set. And again, you can see this is message listing, message reading. Uh, email, yeah. but you can see it looks very similar. And then different size terminals are important. So uh, narrower is a big pro is a big project, um, something I haven't really tackled. But wider is usually easier. Okay, so here we are in, in 132 column mode. You can see that we're making more use of the screen, and. Uh, you know, the message text fills the screen as much as possible. Uh, give email an example here. This can be useful if you're, especially if you're looking at something like the, the, the raw uh, contents, like an HTML encoded email. You can see down here, it tells me like this is H, this email is HTML encoded. Uh, and then de translated to uh, ASCII and, and CP437, and uh, in this case we got some color uh, sequences. Um, 
And if we look at the uh, the raw version of this file, it's you know all HTML. Anyhow, you get the idea. So uh, this is the old way, and this will be the new way. I'm toggling preview, find the message, and if you don't like the colors, obviously all that stuff will be modifiable. And if you have custom headers, it'll you it'll display your custom headers. It doesn't have to be the hard coded stuff from the text stat. My goal is that if you had to, you could use this as your primary email client, and you'd get the main functionality that you needed, uh, and you didn't have to use a, a, what they call a rich client like you know um, Eudora, Outlook Express, stuff like that. Um, or or Gmail web UI something like that. So you know if you had to if you were stuck with a terminal This is what you could use and you'd, you'd, you'd get the gist of all the emails and be able to converse with people uh, You know, I don't anticipate sending like HTML encoded emails But certainly being able to read an HTML encoded email is important and it does UTF-8 translation and it what it's whatever point we support uh, UTF-8 uh, in Synchronet and in sync term then uh, you know, we'll probably send UTF so UTF-8 to the terminal, so you could, I don't know, include emojis and foreign language characters. So, anyhow, that's all for uh, this video. I will see you next time. That's a good YouTube video. You're terrible.